guys, this is Edna with Squire Photography and now Square Eye Digital. I am going to teach you very quickly and very easily how to properly use newborn digital backdrops or backgrounds, whatever you want to call them. So the easiest way to do this, guys, is to shoot your image in the correct manner for your digital backdrop. That's really the best way of doing it. So for instance, this cute little teal blue chair is adorable and, and I put this white fur on there to make it easier for those of you because most people are gonna have white fur that they can use. All you have to do is shoot it in the correct lighting. So for instance, here you can tell that I have my main light source coming from the right side because the shadows are on the left side. That's how you know which way to shoot your digital background. Now, let's say you happen to have shot the baby the opposite way with your main light on your left side. Well, all you have to do is copy that backdrop, go to edit, transform, and flip horizontal. And now you have the light coming from the left side. But I always shoot my stuff from the right. So my babies are all shot with the light coming from the right side and you can tell there's shadows here on this side on the left side I don't know if you can see that on the left side of the baby let me make my um, there we go my brush bigger so you can see it so here on the left side you see that there's shadows and I have this white fur now the best thing to do is shoot for the same fabric that's going to make your job so much easier i do have a youtube tutorial that is for when you didn't shoot with the correct backdrop but you really do want to match them up as close as possible because it's going to make your life a million times easier so literally this is all you do you go in and i normally use my um, selection tool right here on the left hand side is the quick selection tool and I make it kind of small here you can see that my brushes gets bigger and bigger and bigger and now it's smaller so like right around there and I will click around the baby just like this right and then I'm going to take the lasso brush and I am going to press shift and I'm going to grab that background as much of the background as you want actually so as much of the background as you want like that so that now you have a selection of not only the baby but some of this fabric and I'm going to go to select refine edge and this is where you can actually make refinements to the edge now I'm gonna give you a couple of hints and tips that will make your life a lot easier I would click here on the smart radius right here under the edge detection and I click it up until you start seeing some detection here of this edge. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. And that's too much, so we're going to go less. That's a little bit better right there. But you see how like scraggly this edge looks? I'm going to zoom in for you guys to see it. That's a really scraggly edge. You see that? So you're going to want to go to smooth edge. And you want to play with that until you get a better edge and also contrast these are the two that are going to give you smoother edges now I feather at most things at about 1 1.5 so I'm gonna to go to 1.5 there and look at what a difference that has made already right so I'll go less and you want to really just play with these things until you feel like it's appropriately smooth or appropriately contrasted there we go that looks pretty good to me pretty good right there now what you can do to bring in all these little hairs is you can go in and paint in areas where you think there is hair so right here there's little hairs watch what happens see that little hair that came up this area there's little hairs And this area, there's a whole lot of little hairs right there. There you go. And it's, you'll, you'll even see that it's going to start bringing in these hairs here. See? Look at that. That's going to make it easier for you to blend in. Okay. So 
You can remove the contrast and the edging so you can see what that looks like. Remove the smoothing and you can see that it starts to get scraggly again and you start getting weird stuff coming through here. So we always want to add a little bit of smoothing and a little bit of contrast. Just what you feel looks good to you. And now a big hint and tip I'm going to give you guys is to shift the edge. So I'm going to show you. If I shift the edge to the right here at plus 52, what it's doing is it's giving you 52 pixels or 52 plus 52% and it's giving you extra background and you absolutely don't want that. You actually want to shift your edge down so that it's bringing in pixels so you don't get any color contamination from the outside background. So that looks pretty good to me right there. I'm at negative 31. You can play with it, see what looks good to you. There you go. And now you're going to go here to output two and you're going to new layer with mask. Now I'm, I think I'm using CS6. Um, I like to use a little bit slightly older version so we can, I can make these tutorials for people that have, don't necessarily have the newest form of um, Photoshop. Now we're going to press OK after we click on new layer with mask, but I think this is in all Photoshop versions. Okay guys. And you can see that the background was removed. And now we're going to take this image right here and we're going to drop it into our background. Now I give you guys two backgrounds. I'm going to remove this from my screen here, guys. I give you guys two backgrounds always. I give you the original image kind of like shot straight from my camera without brightening and contrast and all that stuff. And then I give you an image that's brighter and more contrasting. Like I suggest that you use the original image and then add your own contrast, brightening, your own anything to the image so that your baby and the background have the same filter added. So for instance, I love to use RadLab. That's one of the filters that I always use. But if I were to use RadLab on top of this in image with the baby on it, then you're adding so much more on top of it already. It's going to get overly contrasty and overly saturated. So you can make all the corrections to just the baby and then add it to this background or it's much easier if you have like an original flat image that doesn't have the contrast and doesn't have all that saturation and vignetting and all these different filters because so many times you buy these digital images and there the, a filters already added to them and I may not have wanted that filter. I may want to go with a vanilla filter or a pastel filter or I may not want vignettes. So I always offer you guys the original image and the added contrast and saturation. So I'm going to, you work with the original image here and I'm going to bring this baby in. So um, I'm going to bring in my back. So you see here in the layers palette that I'm going to drop in this layer, the one that has the mask on it. I'm going to grab it and I'm literally just going to drop it into this background. That's how easy it is. Now I can just close this or save this for future use, whatever I want to do, but I'm, I'm just going to close it for now. And now I have this baby, sorry, I have this baby here and I'm going to, you can press V or your selection tool right there and you can just put the baby where you think it needs to go. And then I'd go into the opacity and I'd drop the opacity just to give me an idea of where the sofa is and what would look good. And I'm going to press control T, which is transform. You can also get to it by going to edit transform. And then these little edges here are what's going to allow us to bring, resize the baby, right? To bring in the baby. Now you always have to press shift while you are resizing and do not let go of shift until you're done resizing because otherwise you're going to get this. See, you're going to squish your baby and you don't want that. So we're going to press control Z, control T for transform, press shift and resize the baby. Now, once you're done letting go of your mouse button that, that you're resizing, you can let go of the shift button. And I like that. I'm going to make the baby a little smaller. So press shift first and then grab that corner and bring it in. And then you let go of shift and then you can move the baby around. So I think that looks perfect. And you can go in and bring up your opacity. I think that looks really nice. So now, obviously, we're going to press enter and enter on your number keypad is uh, the best enter normally for this. So we have this baby and obviously the baby doesn't match the background because the baby I shoot just 
you know, right on the money. I try not to ever overexpose my whites. And so I am going to bring up the baby, bring the baby brighter and try to match it a little closer to this background. So here is the baby up here in this layer, the top layer. And here is your mask right here. And here is the actual baby image. So I'm going to click on the actual baby image and I'm going to press control M, which is curves. And I'm going to bring up the baby's brightness. So this is a very bright image. You're probably going to want to go pretty bright. Now, another thing here, this is a histogram that you're seeing here of the baby's image. If you want your shadows to go lighter or darker or more contrast, you use this bottom little button here, right? If you want your highlights to be brighter or darker, then you use this one up here, right? You see that? And you can go more flat. This is like a matte image. When you see all those trending matte images, that's how they make matte images so easy. So we want to brighten up those highlights a little bit because that white fur is very bright. So we're going to bump this up here. That looks pretty good right there. I think that looks perfect. Do you see that? And now we're just going to blend the baby in. So press OK. And this is where you blend. This mask right here on the right hand side of the baby image is what you're going to use to start blending that mask in. This is a mask. It's only going to show what you're going to blend in. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to press on my brush tool and you want your, and I'm going to bring this in, you want your brush to be the softest brush available and I'm going to go and here it's so no hardness, just all soft and I'm at a hundred percent opacity with a hundred percent flow and I'm going to just start brushing in, in black. So in black, the areas where I want the background to sort of meld into the other background. See that? Now I suggest guys that that looks pretty good. And whatever, let's say you make a mistake like that, you just press X. Sorry guys, press this top left hand button, little tiny, it says it's black and white right here. If you click on that and you just press X, see how that just goes to black and then white, black and then white. So just press X and oh, I made a mistake. Let's just brush that back in. And then you press X and again, okay? So X and X all the time, back and forth. And the nice thing about this, guys, is you already have these shadows built into this image. You don't have to go in and add those shadows to the backdrop when you bring in the baby. Now, literally all you need is one foot of fabric for this to work. All you have to do is have enough that that shadow is going to show here and just a little, all this little tiny fur. You don't need a huge fur. You just need to invest in 12 inches of fabric, right? whatever 12 inches is just enough to show some fur, white fur on your baby. And that's a really good investment, guys, when you want to um, use these digital backdrops is to try to get your background as close to the digital backdrop as possible. That's the best way to do it. I'm going to add more of my original backdrop to here so that it kind of shows there. And, I, and I'm noticing that <clears throat> my backdrop is more yellow, my baby, and my um, fur is a little bit more yellow than my background. So what you can do one of two things, you can add more blue to the babies to remove this yellow. So I clicked on the baby and I'm going to press control M and I'm going to add a little bit of blue. That's pretty good right there. Or I can click on the background. So let me delete that, that information right there. Or I can warm up the background. So just make a copy of it just in case, you know, you don't like it or whatever. You can always just make a copy by dragging and dropping to this little folded piece of paper. And I'm going to go to this middle background copy and I'm going to add some warmth to it, some yellow. So I'm going to go to blue and I'm going to remove a little bit of blue. And I'm going to warm up this image a little bit. So you can go both ways. And normally I prefer to warm up a background then then cool off a baby but either way works so again i just removed that i'll remove that background and i'll just add a little bit of blue to the baby not the mask but the baby so i'm going to brighten up the baby i'm going to add the tiniest little bit of blue and that is perfect for me 
And now at this point, you can go in and retouch your baby and do all the things that you want to do to your baby. Or you could have done that beforehand and dropped the baby in. So any kind of like redness on the face, any weird, you know, um, little marks uh, from diapers or anything like that, like all these little tiny bumps around the baby's face, I'd go in and retouch that now. Or like I said, retouch it beforehand and then bring it in. But that's literally how easy it is to use these digital backdrops, guys. It's best to shoot your baby for the backdrop, but I am also going to add to all of the information on Square Eye Digital, um, the other YouTube video, and I'm going to put it on the description of this one, on how to do it when you're not shooting for the backdrop, when you just have random baby photos that you want to add to a backdrop, like you're using them for your own marketing material. So also be aware guys that sometimes there's this little line here that comes in with the photograph. So you want to go ahead, sorry, that was my fault. Go to your mask and you want to remove that. Press X and you want to be at a hundred percent. And you want to remove any little line that kind of comes in with the photograph. And sometimes that happens. So remove, 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 remove. There we go. Now at this point, guys, I would save this right separately, or you know, you can merge them by pressing Shift Control E. And now you can actually add your um, your filter, whatever filter you like. I have one here on my recipes on Rad Lab, and I, I, Rad Lab is not doesn't pay me for this, but I love Rad Lab, and I like beautiful baby. So I have it's a little bit of a light, a lights on, which is um, brightening, a little bit of contrast, just luminosity, a little bit of sugar rush, which is like a vibrancy, and a little bit of edge blur. So I'll click on that because I really love that. I'll remove some of the lights on because it's already pretty bright, and I'll press finish. And this is transforming my image. So the nice thing about having the original image is you can add whatever filter you want instead of already starting with one that's filtered and having to filter just your baby. So there you go, guys. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for the support. Thank you for everything. Please like and subscribe. I have a lot of newborn um, YouTube tutorials. So wrapping and stuff I'm going to start adding. I have a lot of how to retouch newborn skin. Um, how to puppet warp your baby. There's all kinds of stuff and all kinds of information that's completely free, guys. So again, thank you. Like and subscribe. And please feel free to comment. For some reason, YouTube kicks up the algorithm for these videos if you comment below. So thanks a lot, guys, and have a great day.